Welcome back to Lemmings 2, the tribes. We're now gonna take on the third tribes of our adventures. And surprisingly enough, this one is based around the real world because, yeah, Egyptian. I mean, as far as I know, this game doesn't really take place on Earth or anything like that, so... I don't really think that the country of Egypt is somehow sandwiched between a forest and another similar looking forest, but... Yep, yeah, it's now time to take it up to pyramids and sands. As always, the first level of the tribe is going to be a fairly easy one. Even though it doesn't really give any kind of margin for error, but it's just like... It should be pretty obvious as to what you have to do in order to win the level. You have three different groups of lemmings, two of them merge in order to make one single group, and with the other group down here you create yet another path, or alternatively you probably have seen where I even positioned my digger, so it's possible to make your three gangs of lemmings to just become one and completely disregard the upper path altogether, but even if we didn't you just saw that we have just enough supplies in order to make it through the entire level and it's not as if that this level was a big riddle or anything. It's yet another pretty simple tutorial level except you don't really have the luxury to mess around with your skills but the solution to this level should be obvious enough so that you don't get uh, confused or anything like that. Congratulations, you know how to dig through walls, so let's move on to the next level. Yep, instead of having to dig through walls, now we're gonna have to glue through walls, or floors, or anything that you see fit. But this level is also similarly easy. The only thing is that the upper group of lemming is an urgent matter because, well, they're gonna die if left unchecked, but every other gang out here, eh, you have some time, but let's get cracking immediately. And in case that you didn't want to take any kind of risk whatsoever, you can have an attractor on the bottom hatch of the lemming so that you can be sure that there's only gonna be one lemming going forward in order to build a ramp over the little pool of water, but yeah, the rest of the level is all about pouring glue because of the way that the little ledges over here are positioned. Generally, any triangular ledge is a complete giveaway as to, hey, you completely need to have glue in order to make it through this obstacle. And yeah, I could have finished the level with the runner, but I kinda missed the boat here. But that's okay because these lemmings are not in danger. The only thing that's gonna happen now is that we waste some of our time. And oh boy, we're gonna run out of time because we have roughly 8 minutes left. As much as time was kind of a deal in the regular Lemmings game, in Lemmings to the Tribe it barely is a deal at all. It's just like, it's almost always a non-issue. There are some levels where you might come close to the time limit, but even that we mean like, okay, you might end up finishing the level with like 30 seconds. It's not like the first Lemmings where you had some levels where you will finish with only one or two seconds. No, in this game, it's never a problem. This is a game where you can just chill out and relax. So yeah, Lemmings 2 might be harder to play because there are way more skills and everything, but in a certain way, I think it's also a little bit more forgiving. Oh boy, are you ready for the... Labyrinth of Fog! Yep, Caplock make a return in this game. I mean, okay, we had a level that had Caplock in the beach tribe as well, but yeah, it's the first time that I finally put any kind of attention to it. So, welcome to the Labyrinth of Fun. Well, I see the Labyrinth part, but where is the fun? I'm sorry, but Labyrinths are never fun. It's just like, you can never win whenever a Labyrinth is involved. The key to this level is that you have to wander through the labyrinth as much as possible without using any kind of digging supplies because you do need to keep either your stomper or your scooper ready for the end of the level. And therefore we're gonna try to wander through the maze as much as possible without digging through it so that we just save up on our very crucial tools. So right now we're gonna build a wall in order to make it so that the lemmings are gonna hit the wall and then go where the other lemming is going right here. And then you miss your cue in order to assign your uh, stomper, but that's okay because we... Okay, I was gonna say we're gonna see if our wall is properly built and it turned out... 
it wasn't the case. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm really noticing that my solution is way less than optimal, but okay. Now I was gonna say, my wall is properly built, but it's important for my limbing to go and resume by walking toward the right, because otherwise the level is over. So yeah, as soon as he's done putting his brick down, let's make him jump. The attractor is important here because if you send all of your lemmings down here at once, what's gonna happen is that whenever we'll be at the point where we need to start scooping our way down to the end of the level, the lemmings can walk into the left hand of the level and they can get lost and die because they're going off the screen. Also, whoops, let's not assign our fillers too quickly, but yeah. We're just gonna fill our way out of this hole the good old fashioned way. We need platforms or anything like that. And at this point our lemmings are safe, so it's time to just stop or Yeah, now we're just playing flute now. I don't know how they call this in Egypt or something. I'm pretty sure that these are special kind of flutes, but yeah, just imagine that whenever they play this, there's also a bunch of snakes all over the place sharing the joy of music. Or maybe not, I mean, maybe you don't want snakes around you when you play music. In, in this case, well, just disregard the snakes. I want everybody to feel happy about the music that they are making. Oh yeah, I totally remember this issue of Super Lim. Remember when he was stuck in Egypt and he had to prepare a path in order for every other Liming to come along for the ride? So this level highlights some of the problems that I have with the Egyptian tribes. Some of the hazards in this tribe are really not apparent or obvious. For instance, the Egyptian poles or canes, they're part of the scenery, but the vases? No, they are actual obstacles, so you cannot go through them. And this is the part where it matters, because yeah, if the super limbing just ends up flying into the vases, your journey is over, so yep careful about what you do, and yeah, the stacker at the beginning is to ensure that your lemmings are not gonna fall in the water pit uh, toward the left, and yeah, apart from that, it's all about using your fan in order to make the twister go all the way through the wall. Mission complete. This of all will barely go by in about a minute and a half. Just like, every time that you have a level that has 4 minutes, you might go and think, oh, maybe this level will be closed, but no, it isn't. I have to say, the Egyptian tribes kind of remind me of the beach tribe the way that it was, where level 3 was a little bit harder than the other levels, but yeah, right now we're at level 4 and we haven't really seen much in the way of difficulty yet. It's been kind of smooth and straightforward. But then level 5 happens, and this is where you're definitely gonna start having problems. Also, 3 minutes! Oh boy, we're not laughing around anymore. I know that some people have been confused by the way that the glue pourer skill works, and this of all unfortunately is not gonna alleviate any of your fears concerning this one skill. Right here you can see the problem. We have three pits in order to bridge across, but we only have two glue pourers, so how are we going to do this? First of all, we need to send one lemming in order to do all of the work, as always. He needs to be both a rock climber as well as a slider because I don't think he's gonna survive this drop over here. Now we want this lemming to head toward the left first, so stomp on the very first occasion that you have so that your lemming is not gonna climb all the way on the upper right where he's going to be completely useless. And now it's time for him to become, well, there was an athlete, but now... Well, I guess he's a triathlete now, because he has the capability to climb, to slide, and to run! And finally, he can sing! Uh, never mind, he can just jump. So now you're probably wondering, how is this helping out in any way whatsoever, because we haven't bridged any single one of these gaps? Well, we need to dig all of the path first, because this is how we're going to glue the two pads together with only one single bucket of glue. Now that the entire pad is ready, it's time to pour the glue and watch the magic happen. Yeah, we bridge over the first gap and now the excess glue is just sliding out and pouring over the other gap. Yeah, 
that's a pretty devious solution. It's just like, considering how the first four levels have been kind of a non-issue, this fifth level solution is definitely fiendish in its own way, and it's a little bit more of a map of things to come for the later levels of the Egypt tribe. Speaking of, we have reached the halfway mark, and therefore it is time for the update to be called quits. So, are you ready to be back for Rupert's Questling? Next update.